Hello, my name is Dave Ratt, and I want to share with you today um, my strategy towards mixing rock shows um, or mixing bands live. Um, I'll show you what I do. At least I'll, we'll, I'll use the Chili Peppers as an example. Um, I have a couple kick mics. Um, it's good. I have a snare top, a snare bottom, uh, hi hat, rack tom, floor tom, floor tom, ride cymbal, pair of overheads. Um, all right, so next we got flea, uh, bass, if we run a bass clean, a bass dirty DI, clean DI, dirty DI, and a bass mic. So you get three inputs for him. Guitar left, guitar right, guitar, I don't know, center, uh, mono, and then guitar, what we call guitar three, uh, which is the other rig. And finally we have vocals, where we've got uh, vocal flea. Vocal Anthony, vocal John or Josh, as the case may be nowadays. So how do we keep all these things in check? Um, here's what I do. I take my vocals and I run them into a stereo subgroup. So here we've got some subgroups. And we'll use a vocal subgroup, left and right. Um, I'll take all my guitars and I'll run those into a stereo subgroup. I'll take my bass, I'll run that into a mono group, I'll take my kick and snares, those right there, and I'll run those into a kick snare group, and then um, I'll take my toms, rack floor floor, and they will come down and hit a group, toms, left and right, and finally I will take my metal stuff. Everything made out of metal, and those will go into the metal group, left and right. Okay, so now we've got our ten groups here. We've got vocals, guitar, bass, kick, snare, toms, and metal. These ten groups are panned out, left, right, left, right, mono, mono, left, right, left, right. What I'll do now is I'll put compressors. I'll put compressors on each one of these groups, ten compressors. I don't link them in the stereo. The reason you don't link a stereo group, or let's use a guitar as an example, the reason you don't link guitars is if the guitar is heavy to one side, um, let's say the guitar left is heavier than the guitar right, it's louder, then it would, be, it would come out here. If you have your compressors linked, it would sum the two left and rights on the uh, listen part of it, and it would turn down both sides. So it wouldn't rebalance that ratio. The, the left heavy guitar would stay left heavy. Um, we want these compressors to even that out. We don't want to fix it, but we want it to moderate it. All these comps I run at about a 2 to 1 to 4 to 1 compression ratio. 3 to 1 is my norm. Um, so I'm not using a, um, a tremendous amount of compression, which allows when it gets heavier on the left side, the guitar is heavy to the left, it allows it to be louder, but not that much louder. It still keeps things in balance. Uh, we really don't want half the arena or half the venue to have blasting guitar on the other side, not to hear guitar. Um, so that moderates that. So that's why you don't link compressors um, when you're doing stereo. Another reason you don't do that is because um, if you hit the link and unlink button with something that's stereo and it's got some nice stereo dynamics, maybe toms, you've got them panned left and right, um, it tends to make it sound more mono. It collapses the stereo image. Uh, when you unlink them, they're moving, uh, they're compressing separately, so the stereo imaging, imaging is maintained. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll go through and set all of these compressors. We'll set them all at zero threshold, all the way across, and all exactly at the same. We'll put them, let's say, all at three to one compression ratio, and then the vocals will set the threshold at, let's say, plus four. So now what will happen is, when you drive them into these compressors, um, all your instruments will try will have a harder time getting louder after they reach that zero dB point, zero um, uh, threshold, and your vocals will continue to get louder up to plus four. What this does, it forces your vocals to want to be on top, so it'll keep that together. So now what happens is, your entire mix, regardless of 
uh, what's going on, it wants to stay mixed. If you've got all your meters about zero, you've got your level set pretty well, you've got your comps all matched, um, it almost forms an auto mix situation. Uh, there's some other things that are interesting about this setup as well. If you take a VCA, now VCA, all VCA is, is a remote control. Anything assigned to that VCA is remotely controlled by a single fader. You can take everything on your board, all your input channels, and assign them to VCA1. Or, let's say, use VCA10. If I bring that VCA up, it's the exact same thing as me going over and having 24 fingers or whatever, and turning all those up at the same time and keeping the ratio and balances between them. So it's a real easy way to remote control, turn up all the faders. So we got VCA10 is all our inputs. Now, we take VCA11, and we assign all of our groups to VCA11, our group faders. This is going to be our groups. This allows you to do something really cool. If you bring up VCA10, you're turning up all your inputs before the compressor thresholds. If you turn up your VCA11, which is on your groups, those faders are after the compressors. If we take VCA10 and VCA11 and we turn up 10 and down 11, we can maintain about the same overall level to the audience, but we're pushing everything into compression. So everything, your mix becomes uh, more compressed and more contained. If you go the other way and you turn down VCA10, which reduces the amount of compression everything's seeing, and you, you make up gain off of VCA11, everything comes out of compression, so your mix becomes more dynamic and more um, open sounding. This ability to take a fast song and push everything into compression by grabbing two faders and maintain volume, and then reverse that process for a slow song and have everything be very dynamic and open, uh, is extremely powerful and allows you to change the um, you know, the sonic signature, the way that the band sounds very easily um, in real time. Okay. Oh, if you have an um, analog console and you take all these compressors and you have them all in a rack right next to each other, you can look at your rack, you can see what's compressing. You can tell that the guitar player turned up instantly by, because you can see that he's more in compression than he was before. Uh, you can see if a mic's down, if one side of the venue is not receiving guitar, you can see that the left hand guitar um, group is down or, the, or whatever it is. So you've got a really good overall indication of what you're presenting the audience. Using the stereo subgroup for vocals is not only to have a little bit of panning maybe on the um, backgrounds, but the effects for the vocals, the vocal effects, vox effects, they also are rooted into that same group. And the reason you do that is when these vocal group compresses, you want it to compress the effects as well. You don't want the vocals to become more and more compressed and then have the effects just get louder and louder in relationship. Um, so you want, and the, uh, you need a stereo group to run the stereo effects. Also you want to be able to um, control your vocal entity. When you bring down those vocal groups, you want the vocal effects to come down with it. The same applies with any um, rack tom effects you're using or floor tom drum effects. They would be rooted back into there. If I find myself looking at the board and, and uh, having to turn something up and down multiple times and set up scenes to account for all that, then uh, I really haven't set this up properly. And that's, um, I, don't, I don't like to be chasing stuff around. I want to look at the overall picture of the show um, rather than micromanage the actual volumes. I want to listen to the tones of the system. I want to look at the audience reaction. I want to watch the band on stage and um, be in tune with that. Um, I'd much prefer the guitar player step on a stomp box and have that guitar jump 10 dB, smash into compression here, fattens the guitar up, automatically comes up, but still doesn't step on the vocals. If I got one person singing, lead, lead vocals singing, and then all of a sudden the backgrounds come in, the overall vocal mix compresses and keeps those three, the three vocalists uh, not that much louder than they were with one singer. So the vocal to instrument ratio is maintained. Um, keeping those ratios in check, keeping them automatically keeping themselves in check. And uh, that's what this setup can do for you. All right. 
Hope that helps. And um, if I think of something else to share that's interesting, I'll do another video on that.